Hello, I'm retired Navy Chief Warrant Officer for Big Pinion, and this is a continuation of Town of Sea Stories surrounding my first tour of sea duty uh, during my naval career. I left off last time after my uh, first class petty officer sent me mess cooking because he lost a bet and wouldn't pay up, and I called him a, will a welch. Anyway, so here it goes. I went mess cooking. And it's my attitude. I always enjoyed every job I ever had, even mess cooking, which most people just didn't care for. Well, it was for a three month tour of mess cooking duty. And after getting checked in to S2 Division mess cooking, they assigned me to the galley and my job was to wash all the big pots and pans that the cooks used to cook the meals. The deep sink was the name of that job. Well, I'd been doing it for a week or two, and one day, one of the cooks did not show up for work for breakfast in the morning. They needed someone else. So they asked us mess cooks that worked in the galley if any of us could break eggs single-handedly, like break an egg and dump it on the grill with one hand. I'd never tried that. I'd seen the cooks doing it. But uh, I'd seen the cooks doing it with four eggs, two in each hand, and they would crack both of them in each hand and dump them on the grill like four eggs at a time. Those guys were good. Okay, I paid attention to how they were doing it. So when I tried it with one egg in my right hand, I'm right-handed, it worked great. I was the best of us best cooks at doing it. So I got the job every morning to break eggs and dump them on the griddle, and the cooks would flip them. Well, they later modified dumping them directly on the griddle to dumping them in a bowl and pouring them on the griddle. But at this time, we dumped them right directly on the griddle. So I started doing that, and I went to one egg in each hand doing it, got pretty good at that, and I even advanced up to two eggs in each hand I was fast, man, I was fast, and, I was proud. and the cooks bragged on me, oh man, I was proud of myself. But after a couple of hours of breakfast time, breaking eggs, dumping on the grill, nobody had washed those pots and pans. I didn't thought anything of it, because that was my job. So I went back to washing the pots and pans after, after uh, breakfast. And then, by and by, they transferred me to the breakout crew, where you break out down in the ship's storerooms and reefers, all the food that uh, the cooks prepare for the meals, and uh, carry them from the reefers and storerooms to the galley, butcher shop, bake shop, and such. Well, there was like four of us in the breakout crew, and as happens so much with young men or young people, a competition developed among us. One of them was carrying the little half pint boxes of milk. They came in big cases, big cardboard cases. And for you, and we put them on a nylon strap and put it over our shoulder. Or the, the load was physically on our backs. We hold the straps like this. And we'd walk all the way to the gallery. Well, that milk sloshed. And all those half pint boxes, it's sloshing, and that would throw you off balance. Well, the trick was to carry it nonstop from the reefer up three ladders, down passageways through watertight doors and openings, down a ladder, all the way to the mess decks without stopping or setting it down. That was quite a chore. You had to develop the slop with the milk to coincide with your steps, which I, I mastered that. I didn't win any contest with it, but I could do it pretty easy after a while. Then was to carry cases of beef. The beef came in 50 pound cardboard waxed cases, flat. We would stack them on our nylon and put that rig on it lift it and carry it all the way to the butcher shop. I won 
the best heaviest load carried at 314 pounds. Now, I weighed about 140 pounds at this time. <clears throat> I carried 314 pounds of meat nonstop up those three ladders, through those passageways, down the ladder, all the way to the butcher shop before I stopped and set it down. I was proud of that. Uh, it's just one of my memories. <clears throat> well, I transferred from the butcher shop to the mess decks where I would wipe tables and swab decks and so forth for the rest of my mess cooking tour. Well, the cooks there liked me. And it's coming to the end of my mess cooking tour, my three months, so they invited me to change my rig. I was a non rig man anyway, an airman apprentice, E2, and become a cook. And they really did call them cooks in those days instead of mess management specialists like they do today. Uh, and I went up and talked with my leading chief in V2 Division, Senior Chief Kearns, and he said, Opinion, we need you back here in V2. Come on back here, we'll leave you with another mess cook. Okay, so I did. And I went back to the resting gear crew. And uh, the big first class is still cutting hair, and I resumed cutting hair. And, but in my engine room, well, I went topside to work as the rest of your hook runner, <clears throat> but I still cut hair in that engine room or wherever anybody wanted me to set up a stool, except in the rest of your workshop where that was Spencer's place. I finally quit cutting hair. I tipped to, I developed a client base and they would come to me wanting me to cut their hair and, you know, we'd pull into port and us junior enlisted people, we couldn't have civilian clothes aboard. We couldn't go ashore in our dungarees. We had to wear our dress uniform on and off the ship. Um, in any case, we were overseas. I was still a young man. But a man, I'd set up my stool earlier and I'd cut a bunch of heads of hair. And now I'm in my dress whites. I'm going ashore in the Longa Pole City, Philippines. A sailor's paradise for liberty. And a man approached me. He couldn't get off the actor brown. Chief sent him back because he needed a haircut. Hey, Peter, I need you to cut my hair. I said, man, I'm going ashore. I was cutting hair.